Hey friends, uh, welcome back. My name is Misha. My name is Jordi. And welcome back at part two. Uh, we're going to show you a little bit how we did the track Lost. Uh, we get into arpeggiators, um, uh, the file-based um, directory in Cubase, how you easily can drag and drop samples in your your sequencer, um, a little bit arrangement, uh, how we mix a track and master a track. Hope you enjoy. So this is a, a track called Lost, it's uh, featuring uh, Ron Rivers, um, Chris James on vocals. Uh, this track um, is one of the tracks, uh, it's featured on our last album, This Is Not A Universe. And I think in the process of making our album, this was actually the last tune we made. Yeah. And basically we got the a cappella from Chris and that's where we started to make something around that uh, around the a cappella yeah we have a different way of working sometimes we send a track to a vocalist and they'll record over the melodies we wrote sometimes we just ask people if they still have like oh, like yeah. vocals they did and then we create a whole tune around it and this was actually done like that. These vocals were recorded for someone else who didn't use them, I think. Yeah. And then we were like, wow, we really liked him. So we created this whole tune around his vocals. True, I think um, we start, well, we started with, with the chord progression in combination with his voice. Yeah. Uh, so we can start listening to his voice. Uh, we start with the verse. Or is it Where's your head at with this? Move close and hear The most renowned without you, babe So this is, yeah, one part of the vocal um, Second part My plans to leave are changing For you instead the most renowned without you, babe. The most renowned without you, babe. Well, obviously there are a lot of like dubs, uh, four dubs, and this is just one part of the vocal. Um, the other part is the like the the, the yell the yelling part. Oh, yeah. This is really cool. last part is well we call this the, the chorus yeah he actually sent us the vocals without this part and then we created the melody and then you're like just before the tune drops it kind of needs this extra energy or hook so we can lead into the drop so we asked him to record extra vocals for this tune and i forgot that he came up with yes. this <laughs> So this vocal maybe it's, it's nice to add the strings to find out what kind of chord progression we made. Yeah, we uh, like figured out when which key it was, and it was an F, and then we just started playing around, like playing chords, see if we could come up with something that would, yeah, I don't know, yeah, would complement the, the vocal, yeah. like would complement the. the uh, well, we use the string ensemble from contact native instruments so it sounds for me it sounds really like a like real strings so you know he he sings about he's lost without somebody and um, I think we just added that melancholic vibe with the strings to his vocal and together you get this Where's your head at with this? 
complicated do you remember <laughs> I, yeah I think it might have been in a different BPM as well so he has to stretch it a little bit because a lot of dance music these days is like in 128 and we kind of work in 124 so, uh, so yeah sometimes we have to like slow the vocals down and sometimes it like destroys the vocal but I'm not actually sure what BPM this was but yeah some sometimes the vocal processing is quite a lot of time because with the timing and yeah, you know, want to put it on or a little bit more off the grid or. Uh, but yeah, these days software can do so much. Back in the day, you would like if the vocal was in a different tempo, you would be in trouble because you could only just pitch it, <laughs> pitch a vocal to make it faster or slower. And these days, you can keep the same key and nobody will hear what you're doing. We, do, we did um, time stretch the vocal in Cubase and what we mostly do is we Audio like to warp. use the warp mode in, in free warp so you can just if you put on a metronome I just solo this well it's we already corrected it but you can easily like like change the the way where the audio starts and it works really good. Yeah, without actually changing the sound too much, it just changes the yeah the timing. I, you were not able to you do this like a couple of years ago, and now this like it's amazing what software can do. Like in the vocal processing project, we added some EQ and compression, but um, what we did here is to we he. This is the part where we, where we just added a lot of reverb and you know delay on it. And that's that one. This yeah. group. So it's probably all dry now. Like there's a bunch of stuff on it. Just some EQ, again, low cut, a little bit of extra high. Focal rider. Focal rider, yeah. Compression again. A, lot of, a little bit of compression to stereo imaging. Probably. Our favorite stay. reverb. Yes. <laughs> the walls are now without you, babe. The walls are now without you. The Esser from Fab Filter and the Timeless. Yeah, the Esser is nice to take out most of those S's. Yes. That filter one is quite good. The folder over here is, uh, th these are some processed effects we use. Again, have like a part of the vocal, bounce it with a little ocean of reverb to have that background atmosphere. Yeah. And here, double it again. Yeah, this is like... Oh, we, we can still hear the original. Also. 
This is the dry one and this is what Just EQ'd it with a Volcano 2. Filtered it, yeah. And a lot of reverb again. Maybe we should t talk a little about a little bit about the atmosphere around the vocals in the beginning. I will just solo it for example. Um, Beautiful. <laughs> These are just like vocal cuts or atmospheric sounds. So we have these ambient steps and we have combined with like another and you can just actually see what it is. It's a, it was originally in a 115 BPM lo-fi melodic chop golden child in F minor. And we just chopped it into 124 and probably added some EQing on it. Wow. So it just, it, this is what uh, a track really um, give it some depth, so if you combine it with the vocals. Maybe you just don't to really hear it. But if I if I just so you, yeah. if I just solo the a cappella, you can hear the difference. Yeah, you miss it when it's gone. Yeah. So these are like the atmospheric sounds and they're constantly in the breakdowns, even in on the drop. On the drop itself. So these also go to a group and probably we added some sidechain Maybe not. <laughs> no. There's no side chain at all, so. That's the main arp, maybe in the intro? Yeah. So we were going for like a trancey feel tune, but then when it dropped, we wanted to, uh, to it to be really dry. So you have this really big stereo reverby delay intro, and then it dries and uh, drops, and then like the bass is really kind of like mono-y in your face. So the contrast of those things really work together, I think. I think it was in our massive period. <laughs> <laughs> this is again a massive, but the ARP comes from the Apache 5. It's, a, it's an ARP generator from Cubase itself. And I can just, if I just turn it off, it's all gone. Also beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we just played around with the Apache and just we were quite happy with this. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice way to create ARPs without doing it totally yourself. So you can play around and you create patterns that you normally won't do while drawing it in yourself. It's a great tool to make like arpeggiators which normally you won't come up with yourself so just play around with it and then 
yeah, sometimes you create something beautiful and sometimes it doesn't work, but yeah, you also like if you the key range, make it 24. It, like it goes up an octave. You create, you're like every time it feels really different, so just play around and see what you can come up with. And then it was not like, we have to make an ARP that is exactly like this. We were just playing around and we were like, oh, this really fits, so. Like here you can see it builds up. A lot of reverb as well. Yeah, a lot of reverb, and then we wanted to drop without the melody. So you get sucked into this really mono dry bass. And so. it just keeps on that F note before going back into the melody. And then yeah, the, the sub is the bass is made I think with two layers. One is just the sub. Probably also massive. Yeah. This is just a really simple sinus wave with a lot of sub. This is probably taking off. Yeah. Just really just, it is the sub. Yeah. It's probably really mono as well. Yep. Yeah. You can see it right here. Yeah, we made it mono with this stereo imaging. Because it just wasn't mono enough. <laughs> <laughs> It's never mono enough. <laughs> Are you having a cold? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is my Hollywood voice. <clears throat> and of course, a lot of side chaining. Uh, the sub doesn't need to be in the way for the kick. Maybe we can just solo the kick in the sub. Again. So then, above the sub layer it's the most important one the, the bass with a with a fifth on top on the second oscillator and this is i think this is a just for a little bit of it accents the sub yeah, yeah. A little bit of character. But a bitch. And again, it's like a really quite a fast sub, so you get that speed. You, you generate that energy. Well, the third channel is we made. We made it just our own arp, arpeggiator. Yeah, and it rolls nicely with the bass. And as you can see, like it's the same way we did it on the other track, but like have your kick and your sub set in a certain level. And if that's that's your starting position, you know that anything else you place, it kind of it's easier to balance everything else if these are in the correct position. So this yeah. is the way we kind of work. I think these beats are quite simple. Might be the same kick as the other it's, tune. It's the same kick <laughs> as Bird Feeder. A little bit of compression on it. So for a lot of beats, we like to use like the battery for just to load in the sample quickly. And if you don't like it, you can just easily change it really quickly. What is the, are there any plugins on the hi-hats? Probably EQing again. Yeah. Taking all the low end off. No, low end in there. No, no, no. <laughs> A little bit of side chaining. It makes the kicks more punchy. Um, it's 
some clap processing. We added a little bit of high end, uh, the Hella plate for like a more roomy vibe. This is with and this is without. <laughs> and then we compressed the reverb we clap. Add some more stereo. Yeah, add some stereo. That's a little bit more mono now. And this is a simple one. We probably use it for intros and outros to introduce the clap. As you can see, we don't really do too much. It's like not extreme side chaining or not extreme compression. It's all little steps that make quite a big difference if you add them all together. The, there's no magic well, I think preset or anything. <laughs> What is very handy, uh, what we do use a lot is our own sample library. Well, with, when it comes to drums, it's really important what samples you use in, instead, instead of how you process them. Like, the, the, the basics should be good to start with, otherwise it's, it's really hard to make a, a bad sounding clap sound good. It needs, already needs quite a good punch or the transient should be okay. It's yeah. the same with the kick and also with like hi-hats and it's really important to focus on that you use the right samples instead of trying to make bad samples. But I think we collected so many samples in the past 20 years now. Yeah. We collected them into one folder and just sorted them out. And like we have a lot of drums, uh, drum hits. You know, we can, we can go to the in kick folder and you know, there are some kicks in Deep House we might use. You can just, just drag it and then there's a kick in your sequencer. So it's, this is, I think we use this quite a lot. This kick? No, the, the, oh. this, this way of working, like we sorted out our sample. So if we insert a clap, it's, it's good enough already to use it. So yeah, it sounds good and in I the think, beginning. And we know, uh, our experience, we kind of know what we were searching for. So for us, it's quite easy to have a beat going pretty quick because, yeah, I don't know, it might be just experience, but also just having a great folder with all these library, like all these drum loops that already work. It's pretty easy to come up with something pretty fast. We collected a lot of samples from our own and, and this is a folder we used recently, like a lot of loops we used in tracks we made. We just kind of sample a lot of loops we made earlier. So it's already EQ'd, processed, so you can just easily just track it in. For example, uh, this song is 124, this is a tambourine loop with on 123 and good function of Cubase is to click this button on and it just stretches it, to it the same stretches time. it to the same BPM exactly yeah if you if it, it this needs to be correct um, we can probably hear it. she leaves it in there <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, the, um, I think this is why it, it, there are, I mean, it doesn't look very complex, but we already did some work before this, I think. And also this beat is pretty simple, because yeah, you have all the strings and the arpeggiators that already have quite a lot of rhythm to them. so. These, these beats are just there to... It's more complementing the... Yeah, complementing the, the groove. The bass. Yeah. And I 
you have the lead sound. You can just solo it first. Yeah. It's he likes to play surprising. the trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like a brass a brass sound yeah. from a like a chord monopoly, but it's again a massive and. Surprisingly, it's called a Juna plug. So. so yeah, we have to use it. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's it's because of it's because of the attack is very late. So yeah, yeah. This is why it makes it sound more bra brassy. Yeah, that's it's also not on grid, so because it it comes in a little bit later. Yeah, it gives a nice funk to your... Almost feels like it's off. Right. Yeah, it's probably a little bit now. You've changed the attack too much. Yeah. side-chaining as well. Yeah, and, and like melodies like this, the repetition of it really like makes it kind of like a trancey tune. You get into this trance because it just keeps on going, that, that rhythm of the, the lead. And this, I think this is a, a processed file of the leads in with a lot of delay on it. I think this is just a loop from from a tape delay. And it it makes the track it adds just it's a little bit of a, like a high end add-on. I just turn it on. Sneaky way of adding some white noises. Another string building up. Take a look at the FX section, maybe. Again, nothing really <laughs> scientific about this. <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> this is Misha sneezing his nose. Mm -hmm. Again, taking off all the low rumble. Same for this. I think we use some sidechain on this one. And this is like a panning tool. It just keeps going from left to right. Just a little bit. So it stays out of the center of the track where all base all the bass is coming from. And this tab. This I think this is a This is a pretty characteristic one for the track. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of like low end. Funny plugin. It just it only works on Windows, unfortunately. It's a really old, but I really love this delay. Yeah. <laughs> they should keep on making it. 
So a lot of reverb and delay and cutting on all the low end. I have no clue where this step is coming from, but probably from our sample library. Yeah, like the mastering is probably, it's already happening in our project. So while we are mixing and producing, no, actually while we are, while we are producing, we already start to mix. For example, all the beats go to a beats group. All those beats go to this. And we can just kind of mix with the groups. This is actually our master. Yeah, a lot of people ask us what what kind of processing we have on our master, but it's it's, it's actually nothing. really really simple. I think this one is always <laughs> on our master. It's a really old plugin, but somehow you can hear it distorting. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. The OT2, the OT2 fixes our mix. <laughs> so it's basically uh, com a little bit of co uh, compression and multiband compression. Compression, wow. And then the stereo imaging. A little bit of stereo imaging. But Make not much. No, just put the high. And then. Yeah, just plug it. It's just a, a convert. It converts it to sixteen bit, so it doesn't look like it's clipping, even though it's clipping. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, we start uh, when we started to mix and master. We just go first to the kick, and just see how how hard we can get it with the glue. Oh, well, we compressed it a little bit, so it's probably hard enough. And then just adding the bass. And slowly adding like percussion and synths and the vocal, just to hear uh, if some something distorts or not. So basically the mixing and mastering inside the same project well I think um, while producing the album we, we found out which kind of track was like the loudest one in, in 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 the mix overall and I think this this one was pretty loud it's in in F minor yeah if I believe so it, there's a lot of bass involved uh, um, the clean the mix is pretty clean I mean, there's a bass and a synth and, and, and some beats, so uh, I think we took this track as a reference for other tracks. Yeah, and if you look at their master, we also have like a loudness meter on the master always, so we can see when it's like, when most of the sounds are playing at the same time. Uh, you can see how loud it is, right here, this is minus. 6.5 that's basically the loudest that we kind of go and that's also a tool we use to to get everything the same level like we look at how loud a tune is and then if we're around the same vol volumes then we're like oh yeah that's good that will make sense all together so this is also a tool that is always on the master if a tune is like not loud enough then we try to make it louder especially because you when you play in in clubs and when you are at a certain level and then you put it, play a new tune which is like 2 or 3 dB less loud then you can feel it on the energy on, in, on a dance floor it kind of like you lose people so it's quite important to kind of keep the same level all over your or, or build it up but it should not be too big a difference because then people are like oh, what's this yeah I mean there's a game button 
gain knob on on the mixer but you don't have to gain it like five dbs or something like that yeah you know your mix is not good enough probably yeah and it's also like if you're if you produce real loud to the roof basically if it starts distorting and it's not really that loud yet then you also know there's something wrong in your mix because then something is sticking out too much which makes it distort so that's also a tool to be like oh it's only this loud but why is already everything sounds distorted it's probably your bass is too loud or yeah. something like that it's so it's it's also a nice way of knowing that something's wrong with your mix down if you can't get it loud without it distorting a lot so yeah so, we really wanted to do an album it's also because we both come from a different uh, background background like i've come from drum and bass and i'm and more like from the house music yeah and you can hear it in our music like we make from deep house to quite like techno -y music and we want and that's also how we dj like we play it's quite a story we sometimes start real deep and end real loud and that's also what we wanted to to do with our album have a big story like take yeah. take people places and not just make music for a dance floor but also it should also be just nice to listen to at home and actually be both could also work on the dance floor and be nice to listen to at home and uh, it's nice to just make an album because you can experiment a little bit more uh, and yeah we f find it really important that we do different kinds of stuff because that's also what we like to listen to so we don't want to just make 124 techno music but we want to do a little bit of trance a little bit of progressive i don't want to do trance actually you don't? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, but it was also, it is now our strong point that we have quite a broad sound, but it was in the beginning quite hard because we were all over the place and people found it really hard to place us. Yeah, because a lot of people still like to box everything. Yeah. And so that's, that's hard to do. And the, the album is a, a good like example of if you not box music into one genre, you get a lot of genres in one album yeah and for us it makes it more interesting and i hope for other people too yeah when in drum and bass like a lot of the drum and bass is written in f and g and <laughs> and e because there that's the place where your sub has a lot of body but it's not too low that speakers can't handle it with this type of music because your kick has quite a lot of sub already it, you're allowed to actually go up the skill and down the skill because your sub bass is less important than it is in mm. something like drum and bass so actually our music goes all over the place it goes from yeah, c uh, to key. to e to a and maybe b i'm not sure if you ever did a tune in b but b is a really difficult is key but Niju is also in a, is, Niju is in c major it's that's that's one of the hardest track to it's really low but yeah, yeah it's yeah this it actually allows us to do the whole spectrum of keys range but it's we don't never think of it like in, in in the process of the song we are asking ourselves what, what kind of key is this anyway and then we find out the key but it's not really necessary to know that now there has been tunes that we actually changed the key for it to work that better on the dance floor but yeah we can do you can do all kinds of keys it's nice as long as your kick is good yeah we, i found out we have like most songs are in e on the album which is low <laughs> yeah a little yeah. bit yeah thanks everyone this was it i hope you enjoyed if you want to listen to more tin liquor please check out our latest album uh this is not a universe um, hope to see you again